These are all you see. These you see already. They just effectuate the 500. Well, appointments, right? Yeah, we're on all appointments. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. It looks yeah, different so because it's coming from the manager's budget. Yeah. Good evening. Welcome to our regularly scheduled meeting of the Town Council of Monday, May 15, 2017. Mike Rell, if you could lead us. Here. Councillor Latina. Here. Councillor Martino. Here. Councillor Rao. Here. Councillor Spinella. Here. Deputy Mayor Barry. Here. And Mayor Montaneri. Here. Thank, Thank you. you. We have no hearings. We're going to go right into public comment. Anyone here this evening wishing to speak in public comment on any topic? Public comment? No one wishing to speak this evening? Public comment? Okay, we'll close public comment. Council reports. Any council reports this evening? Tony? Uh, last week, the uh, Senior Citizens Advisory uh, Committee, in lieu of their meeting, had their uh, uh, spring cleanup meeting where they invited pe residents to show up. People brought items to shred, prescriptions to dispose of, eyeglasses for recycling books for the library and there were people there to talk about recycling. Uh, they did a real nice job and there was a large turnout for it. Thank you, Tony. Anthony? We had a meeting of the Memorial Day Parade uh, Committee, which was our final meeting. Um, the parade will be the 27th at 9 o'clock. Um, we, as we stated last time, we did lose our, our chairman, but we're going to push on and everything seems to be in place uh, for a 9 o'clock Tip, tip off to the Memorial Day Parade. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Council comments? Mike Rell? Um, just uh, one comment about the um, Brainerd Airport Noise Advisory Committee. Um, the nice weather, uh, spring weather and um, summer months lead to more air traffic. Uh, according to um, all the statistics of Brainerd Airport. There have been some complaints uh, recently of some uh, low-flying aircraft over Old Weathersfield. Uh, after this meeting, I, I would like to talk to uh, um, Mayor Montaneri and to uh, Jeff Bridges about some uh, conversations we might have um, to uh, uh, alleviate some of the concerns of the residents and hopefully get uh, um, Brainerd to comply with some of our requests to continue flying up the river. Uh, I'm starting to sound like a broken record up here about the, uh, um, the airport, but uh, um, I just want people to know that with the summer months coming, there are more planes coming in, and uh, with the sometimes tricky storms out there and, and um, uh, not so dependable weather uh, forecast that uh, alternate routes may be required and that uh, always abiding by going up the river may not be the case. and um, uh, we should uh, we should at least talk to some of the folks at the airport and and make sure that uh, um, the messages are getting down to the pilots. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Certain, certainly we can do that when we're finished. Thank you. Other reports, council members. Tony. Uh, last week I was at the uh, business after hours at the Farmington Bank. Uh, they did a real nice job. They turned around and gave. Uh, they had one of their data processing people there who did a presentation on to show how both businesses and, and private servers are being hacked and what you could do to avoid that so I mean it was very I think helpful to a lot of the businesses and towns that just show up for that and want to commend the chamber on a great uh, awards night last week a bunch of the counselors were there uh, they did a real nice job and a lot of great people were uh, Honored that night, unfortunately, I didn't bring my program, so I don't want to leave anybody out and not announce who got what because I don't want to leave anybody out. Thanks, Tony. Anything else? Council reports? 
Jeff, anything from the town manager's office? Uh, let me just go over what's on the podium here this evening. We had some extra paper. Uh, one thing you have is the motions for the budget adoption this evening. Uh, the heading on that is motion for the budget adoption. Mm -hmm. You have the uh, spreadsheet, the blue spreadsheets that uh, have all the detail condensed into four pages. Uh, based upon the motions, that is the outcome of the budget. You have the budget reductions as discussed last Thursday with a $330,000 total reduction on the town side. Um, you also have a spreadsheet put together by Finance Director Mike O'Neill that shows the impact on the Town of Weathersfield's budget as uh, revised by the governor's budget that he released today. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's several million dollars less than what we anticipate adopting this evening in terms of revenue. And finally, there's a replacement page for one of the items in the packet. It is for the uh, police server pack, police server item. On the attachments, I just listed the value of each quote that was left off inadvertently when I wrote this uh, last Thursday. But you can see the different value of each vendor um, that responded. Other than that, I have nothing further. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Dolores, anything? Uh, I think <coughs> that um, we have a change on one of our representatives to the Metropolitan District Commission. Uh, Mark Papa had been in the legislative Senate minority uh, a nomination, and we have now P he is being replaced by Peter Gardo. And we had uh, the shredding day, as Tony said, was very successful at the community center. And June is dog registering your month. month. Thank Set. you. Thanks, Dolores. <coughs> We'll move into council action. I don't believe we have any resignations from boards or commissions or appointments. Correct. No unfinished business, so we'll move right to the budget motions for the budget appropriation. Item one. Okay, item one. Sure. Motion that the. Hold on, Tony, one second. Just want to explain, <laughs> if I may, Mr. Go ahead. Based upon the, the request last Thursday of town staff was to find $330,000 worth of reductions, we had arrived at that number by using uh, $300,000 of current year health insurance money into next year. Uh, what you saw on Thursday was 200. We increased that to 300. The town and the board split those dollars uh, 69 to 31%. So that added $31,000 to our reduction and it frees up $69,000 for the board's reduction as well. So that's how the town reached the 330 is using 300 rather than 200 of current year, what we consider excess health insurance funds in that account that will apply next to next year's claims. <coughs> Very good. And in that split, there's a, there's the numbers reduced for the board. Uh, well, the, the reduction is 500,000. It gives them a different move on how yes. they find it. Okay. Can, I, can I just ask a question about how we're going to proceed tonight based on this spreadsheet that we got with the changes in the governor's proposed budget and the impact of such, um, I, I feel we need to have some discussion related to this because I don't think the motions that we have in front of us take that into account. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I think that's correct, Donna. We just got this this evening. I think right, similar, no, I know that. Similar to what I think we had discussion on Thursday um, the governor's proposals obviously haven't been vetted by the legislature, haven't been vetted by the Senate. Um, we're still operating under the assumption that if, as we said Thursday, any of the major moving parts, if they were to in fact be implemented like the teacher's pension or the reduction in ECS or the revenue sharing, uh, we would be looking for the legislative body for a reopener uh, prior to July. So we're still, even though the governor's member has changed, um, certainly want to hear from you but our our understanding is that there is still a likelihood that this number is going to get moving around quite a bit over the next few weeks if not months um, and our thinking was to honor the charter uh, and come up with these appropriations that we're proposing tonight knowing that we may have a reopener if any of the major numbers that the governor is proposing were to somehow make their way through the legislative vote um, we'd obviously have to go back as we discussed Thursday. We, we weren't using the governor's number on Thursday either, were we? 
right now. Yeah. You no, actually, so the, the the decision was was to fall back to current year numbers mm -hmm. that were were adopted and amended <coughs> by uh, the governor over this year. So you're using 2016, 2017 revenues, at least from a municipal aid point of view, in the in your adoption tonight. That's the numbers you're using. You've discarded the governor's budget and have fallen back to current year municipal aid numbers. Okay. Okay, then related to that fact, can you better help me understand related to the current estimates that we have in there from, to, from this year's revenue stream, the potential of what this means related to that? So does that have, if you look at the different items on this list, I mean, some of them, I can see would probably go through. Some may not. I get it that they're not done, and that's making this so much more complicated. But what is when you look at this and you look at the revenues that were put in for this current year, what is the delta? What is the difference from these numbers? Just to make it easier to digest. Because 2.4 million dollars. Less. Less. Plus, on top of that, teachers' pension of $2.7 million. So the net swing is $5.1 million. So they're still talking about that going through. Absolutely. The governor did take 5% off, of, off of it in his new numbers. He was gracious enough to do that. And when we talked on Thursday night, we chose to um, not include that. That is correct. That is not included in your proposed motions for this evening. You're removing it from the budget, actually. So I also want to add, Donna, to your question, which is a good one, um, and maybe for the benefit of the public who is listening in. Several municipalities obviously have passed their budgets, knowing this is still a moving target. We are grappling with that reality ourselves as a town. We did look at the charter language, and we looked at two case laws with respect to whether the town could interpret the shell language in our charter to mean that we could wait until we got more clarity. Yeah, and I, I get all that. And, but what I would tell you is that we, we got guidance from the delegation about the teacher's uh, pension and the ECS piece. And we're basing our proposal tonight in the budget passage on the belief that we have reasonable confidence, not all enormous confidence, but reasonable confidence that our ECS will be preserved and the teacher's pension uh, shift proposed by the governor is, has no support. But we know if for a reason that that does not pan out to be the case, we're going to have to reopen at some point after passage. So we're, we, as you know, we grappled with do we try to get that delay or do we honor the charter this evening passing a budget knowing that there may be a reopener. And uh, we're still, I think, operating under the belief that it's in our best interest as a town to pass a budget similar to the other towns in our local area that have done so, knowing that this uh, is not going to land for a while. And that being said, I mean, I get all that, mm -hmm. but when we vote on the appropriation tonight for the schools and the library and the town, if some of this comes to fruition and we're truly going to be down $5 million, we can't go back to those bodies and reappropriate or take money away, correct? The expectation is that there will be a relief provided by the legislature in whatever budget they adopt that allows towns to go back in to reconcile their budgets with the ending result of the state budget. That is the hope and expectation. But you're right, barring that, tonight the number is the number. So we're not going to be able to, uh, when, when and if that happens, and it's likely that that will happen, based on the fact that the state can't figure it out, that we won't be able to, I mean, no, we're going to reopen it, but everything is going to have to come from the town, right? You can't reopen, can you go back to the library and to the schools? Yes. If there's a reopener, the expectation is you would reopen the entire budget. 
do they un does it do all of the different departments understand that I don't know if they do but that is a conversation happening all over Connecticut okay you have some municipalities that are holding on their referendums you have some municipalities that are adopting and holding their tax bills which is what I anticipate doing this evening is right. we will just sit on a tax bill uh, the biggest you have two big unknowns the teachers pension at 2.7 million in a 32 mil car tax that may or may not survive we we still don't know we still don't know so we're adopting at 32, at 32 which is right. current law but the governor's budget removes the revenue sharing that supports the difference so we knew that was going to happen but it's silent so far on whether they're going to be 32 mils or 37 mils in the new governor's budget we just know that the revenue sharing has been evaporated so, so our swing could almost be to Donna's point, the $5 million that the governor has proposed plus whatever the car tax is, which is what, another $2.5 million? So you're talking seven no, and a half. the car tax is taken, the loss in revenue of the right. car tax is taken into account. In the five? In the five. Okay. Now, we would, if we, they were to take the lid off the car tax, we would then receive $1.5 million dollars and respread funds now it would still be local property taxes so the gain is not you know gain is the gain but at least you wouldn't be lumping against all the real estate right. what is the revenue loss going from a 37 mil to 32 mil for um Car tax slightly more than 1.4 million dollars where it and you said it's calculated in the motions for the current budget that we have before us or <coughs> his revised the budget you're adopting this evening recognizes a 32 mil cap it also recognizes uh, the offset revenue 856 yes well, no, 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 there's nothing in there. There's the 940. Oh, the 940, Just sorry. The 940. I, I want to say, Don, to your point, though, which I agree with, is the wrestling match we're going to have if the state were to move forward with any of these subsections is almost identical whether we pass or don't pass tonight, if you think about it for a second. We could elect, and we had that discussion, as you know, we, okay. we could elect not to pass a budget. We could wait. And we'll have that same wrestling match 60 days from now, let's say, as we could potentially have. I'm relying on uh, the fact that we're pretty confident that if these swings were to be implemented after we pass a budget honoring the charter, that the reopener will abs absolutely happen and will be allowed that opportunity. And all of the line items that we're passing tonight would be obviously open for discussion again, including the board, um, the town passage, uh, mill rates, tax impacts, all of that would be opened up again for a full discussion reflecting what actually passes. So uh, the trouble for us, I think, in terms of what you do when you're looking at the charter is if we had, we had had, had discussion with the legislative body about whether there would be uh, a bill passed at the Senate and, and uh, legislative level to allow us to extend our charter. That did not happen. It did not make its way through. Um, and so initially I had hoped that that would be a good strategy, that we'd get, we'd get that cover and that they would pass a bill and say towns are given latitude to hold off on their charter passages uh, until we get our state budget. That obviously did not happen. So plan B was either honor the charter and look at the legal implications of not honoring the charter and potentially having a legal challenge by the community or uh, risking that we were going to have to go to a reopen. And I think we're, we're, we're looking at that same tough story whether we pass tonight or don't in terms of the reopener. So my thinking is, and I, I think that's the sense of why we're proceeding forward with motions for budget adoption. I also think there's a, an important message back to the legislature that the town has done its due diligence to pass a, a, a budget that I won't say denounces, that's too strong a word, but clearly indicates lack of support for the proposals from the governor's office, which is consistent with what we're hearing from our delegation. We don't know how they're going to get there, and none of us can conjecture, but I think at the end of the day, having the town convey a message to our elected officials that we have passed a budget that pulls those items out is clearly a message back 
to them that there's more pressure since we've had an adopted budget that does not uh, acknowledge those swings. Uh, gives them hopefully a little bit more uh, emphasis, I guess, on supporting the municipalities that they represent. So it's a, it, there's no question this is a tough call and, and um, we're, we're going to have to observe over the next weeks or months what happens at the state level knowing that a lot of this may be reopened. But I think the message back to our community is here's what our budget should look like based on flat ECS support from uh, last year, um, the same level of support for pilot and programs that the town manager included with these reductions. And we've also demonstrated that absent those changes from the state, we have done due diligence with respect to support from the board for their contribution in reducing the budget, the town side contribution in reducing the budget, and getting a proposed budget in front of our community that I think reflects our best effort to um, propose something for our residents that is reasonable, given everything that's moving. Um, but, I mean, over the years, we've had this topic before, but never quite like this. I mean, we've always had this, like, what's going to happen to the state? There's a couple of moving parts. These are big it's, numbers. We've been closer. Yeah, uh, much closer. And, and there's no question we share, I think, the same sentiment that you're expressing, um, that, that, that if these big pieces were to make their way into the municipal budgets, it would be very devastating for communities. Um, I think the legislative representatives know that what the state is dealing with, uh, the governor is putting on the table a solution that is heavily damaging to municipalities. And I think the legislative representatives are, are already circling the wagons to not uh, respond to that uh, approach. But it's, it's, I think we all sit here and say, wow, you know, this could be unbelievable. If well, I think happen. this is the, unfortunately, this is the reality. And while I don't necessarily agree with the way he approached it, I don't see that anybody else has done anything different. And we haven't had those hard conversations that need to be had. And I know that we've always been very responsive and conservative in looking at our municipal aid and what might happen to that. Um, but this is, is just Well, yeah, the details crazy. in what I saw today put a major shift away from suburban communities to the cities, which is the governor's intent. And I believe that that's resoundly uh, disliked by the many, many towns that are impacted. Uh, five or six million dollars of impact to Wethersfield, if this were to prevail, uh, would entirely change the playing field and how we do our, our business. There's Absolutely. no question. And I, I don't think any of us uh, can really visualize what that would look like. That would be devastating to schools. It would be devastating to programs. It would certainly mean uh, reductions of staff and compensation uh, services. Um, and I, you know, I think anybody that really takes a, a deeper look at what's being wrestled with at the state level knows that this proposal, uh, in terms of the trickle back down to municipalities, would be. Uh, extremely destructive um, so we're relying obviously on elected officials to fight back on that and find all their alternative paths but um, we still have to wrestle with what we do as a, as a town with our budget reflecting the hope and desire that this doesn't make its way through as shown and we'll face that I mean if it happens this body will have to come in and look at it and start having those discussions uh, we'll be meeting with obviously our town manager our board <laughs> It would not be a, a, a pretty story. So having said all that, I, I think we, we still believe in, res in respect to the charter, we should pass a budget tonight that reflects what we believe is our best effort without all that information available to us and prepare ourselves for that reopener if it occurs. Um, at least I also think it's helpful for the public to see what, what we believe our budget should look like without those impacts uh, supporting our community, our mill rate, and the reliance to the extent that it's necessary for property tax and revenue sharing. So that's where we're at. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Tom. Not, not pretty, I understand. Mike, do you want to say something? Just um, you know, going along that same route of not pretty, before you know, we kind of got our hands dirty with this budget, one of the 
issues in December or you know late fall was that of the possibility of Hartford reneging on some of their obligations, one in particular to the MDC. And I, I know pretty much everybody up here had gotten correspondence with constituents and residents about the concerns that they had. Looking at today's numbers, the most recent um, proposal from the governor, you know, Hartford, our capital city and the neighbor to our north, is unfortunately running about a $40 million shortfall for this year. And I know there's concerns, possibility of bankruptcy or, um, you know, cuts, devastating cuts to the city. Um, in the governor's budget proposal today, his revamped budget, there's, there, the state is going to cover that $40 million and, in fact, give an additional $10 million. So I think they're getting $50 million from the state in this current governor's budget. You know, looking at what we're losing in $5 million and what the city of Hartford is getting in addition to what they need, an additional $10 million, you know, there's no way around it. We're paying half of what Hartford is getting extra in the governor's proposed bill that came out today, if I'm not mistaken. And I just want, you know, that to set in for a quick second for you folks who are out there and who may be listening. I mean, we're, town of Wethersfield, we've done pretty good over the last couple of years. Unfortunately, you know, just like the state, we've run into some difficulties with lack of funding coming in. Um, our revenue is being cut, unfortunately, from the state. But when you look at municipalities, it's kind of a, you know, those who have and those who have not. And unfortunately, the have-nots are getting the money. You know, the city of Hartford, unfortunately, is they're, they're taking our $5 million and, and putting it into a surplus. Um, I just don't think that's right. I mean, that's on the state level. Um, but those are the numbers that we're going to have to grapple with if we are going to have a reopener in the summer. Uh, I just wanted yeah, again, to I, I, obviously that's that the governor's proposal, which also has the same uphill climb with the legislative body. Um, the optic of what you're saying could potentially be accurate if all of those things landed, which I have great doubt will, but I, I certainly see the point you're making. Um, the one line item that I think to follow up your point, though, Mike, on the <coughs> NBC reserve is that the, uh, the legislative body, as you think you know, did take up and passed a, uh, a, a bill or a motion in the change in charter for the MDC that relieves us of that reserve requirement, which is at least good news in terms of the fact that we did not include that. We, we uh, passed motions object, uh, denouncing that, I guess, as an alternative, and the MDC has responded with a charter change. On that, which if they, and they ha they did make their most recent payment, but um, if that were to be a default, it would not fall back to the municipalities. Okay, um, why don't we begin with our motions? Okay. Motion that the budget is submitted by the town manager on April third, twenty seventeen, be in hereafter is amended as follows: decrease. $55,100 from account 42501 Pilot State Owned Property. Decrease $2,095 from account 42515 State Pilot Colleges and Hospitals. Increase $1,987 account 42610 Mashatucket Pequot. Increase $21,785 40, uh, account 42611 Marissa grants for municipal projects. Decrease $413,226 from account 42614, Marissa revenue sharing. Decrease $985,124 from account 43011, educational cost sharing. Increase $3,000 from account 45808, recreational fees. Decrease $335,505 from CNEF slash LOSA. Second. Motion is second. Discussion? Mike, yeah. I just thought it was uh, disappointing that the fact that the uh, BOE budget at the end was negotiated behind closed doors <coughs> without all of the members of the council. And also found it disappointing that the mayor said that 
um, a three to 3.5 percent increase was normal for Weathersfield residents. So I don't find any increase normal for Weathersfield residents. So I wanted to say. Thank you, Mike. Jeff. On the uh, three thousand dollars of the recreation fees, those are that increase is what's being proposed tonight from Kathy Bagley. Later on the agenda, you see the recreation fee increase for two facilities. That. 3,000 is the anticipated extra revenue from increasing those fees. Thank you, Jeff, for that clarification. Other discussion? I was just gonna comment, uh, um, a caucus uh, uh, is, is common. I know you guys caucus. There's nothing unusual about that. Um, the $500,000 from the Board of Education takes into consideration that there will be no loss of teachers no loss of programs, which were on the table. Freshman sports, as you know, those were things that were being mentioned. Um, so it's, it's leadership that leads to caucusing and sometimes agreements. And I think it was um, not fair to, uh, to call that a secret meeting. So it's a, a caucus and, and you, you know full well it's done at the legislature. It's done here. You guys do it. Uh, it's, it's a common part of, of 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 how things get done, and it's it's a show of leadership by the mayor. Other discussion? <clears throat> sure. I think it was just leadership that just cut the other party out of the talks. That's all. Other comments? Okay, we have a motion. Hang. On. Oh, go ahead, Mike. And again, I mean. It's one thing to caucus and you know come up with an idea and share that with fellow councilmen or fellow board of ed members. But prior to any caucus or meeting that was had between two members of the same party for both the board of ed and the, the town council, we did discuss. We discussed three options and everybody left the meeting with the idea that those three options would be on the table. Unfortunately, those of us who weren't in the meeting don't even know if option two and option three were even discussed. So if it is in fact a caucus, then you come out of a caucus and you propose, you, you say what was discussed and you say this is how we came upon the agreement. Unfortunately, when we sat down in a meeting last week, that wasn't the case. It was basically told this is where the Board of Ed came in and this is what we're going to have to do. Not knowing whether or not those two other options were put on the table ties our hands behind our back and we were left with only one cut. Could there be more cuts? Sure. Could they, would they hurt? Yes. I mean this budget's not a pretty budget. It's going to cut a, a number of items. But you know, the reality is to get to a common ground that could be negotiated and worked out, there has to be discussion from both sides of the aisle. And unfortunately, I don't think that was the case with this. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Any other comments? Jody? I just wanted to say um, some overall observations, and I apologize, I'm suffering for some allergies tonight, so my voice is a little cracked. Um, <clears throat> with respect to the extension from the legislature on voting after our charter date, <clears throat> I understand that that wasn't something that they entertained, but that also leads me to believe that maybe they're not going to entertain a reopener. I mean, I haven't seen language. Has anybody up here seen language? And how specific is it going to be? Are we going to have our hands tied behind our back again with certain line items or certain responsibilities that we are obliged to have. I think that this budget with a nearly 3% increase is going to cost each particular household in our town roughly $200 more in a yearly tax bill. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't like having to pay more, especially if we have the ability to control it. Um, we have a lot of state workers in our town. Some of them have already received pink slips. Some of them will be receiving pink slips. And we also have a lot of seniors in our town who are on fixed incomes. I don't think that that's lost on any of us except for the fact that now we're going to be requiring them to pay more in taxes. Again, 
I don't know how we're going to afford this. This year is nothing. This is a walk in the park compared to what's coming down the road. And I really think that we needed to have some really tough decisions made this year, and I'm not so sure we, we achieved that. I think that you know there are some things that we can do that are responsible solutions. We talk about shared services till we're blue in the face, but we need to start executing those. Do we really need two finance departments? Do we really need two HR departments? Or how about facilities? Why do we have two different departments? These are some real solutions that we need to seriously sit down and start talking about. I also think we need to take a deep dive into our Board of Assessment Appeals. This year, they reduced the amount to, from $2 million of assessments, which then cost us nearly $100,000 in tax revenue. Why? What is the logic behind them reducing those property taxes or those business taxes? I would really like to know. I think that we're all on the same team, and I think that we all have to work together to really come up with some good solutions, because again, this is not going away. It's going to be worse. Thank you, Jody. Anthony? <clears throat> I have to say, I actually agree with um, Jody on a lot of those points that she mentioned. Um, and if nothing else, I think we could take away from this budget process, and I think I asked this a couple times in the last meeting, that the current system we have is, is not a sustainable system. Uh, it's not sustainable for next year and it's not sustainable into the future and, and that probably goes a lot to shared services and and maybe it goes into the expectations of the citizens too um, but it's just not something we can keep on doing I understand we have to do it this year and a lot of it's because of what the state has done to us and, and the pickle they put us in in such a short uh, period of time um, but I, but I do think um, that Jody's right that we do need to take a, a long hard look at, at the way we operate in this town um, and and maybe that means curtailing people's expectations um, of the services that, that they get I, I'm not smart enough to know all the answers and maybe none of the answers but um, the one answer I think I did get was that the system we currently have is not a system that can work into the future um, so I do think we need to sit down and look at those things um, you know maybe after the, the coast is cleared uh, a little bit um, but you know I think into the future we do need to look at those things thank you thanks Sam. <clears throat> any other discussion or comments okay we have a motion and a second in front of us uh, item one all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed no. no do you have what you need to Laura now do you need a show of hands or no, I haven't. You haven't? Okay. And who was the second, though? I didn't hear I was. Thank you. Motion two. Motion that the budget as submitted by the town manager on April 3rd, 2017, be in hereafter, is amended as follows. Decrease $3,496 from account 120, town manager. Decrease $1,829 from account 140, data services. Decrease $763 from account 150, town clerk. Decrease $3,042 from account 220, finance. Decrease $1,765 from account 230, tax assessor. Decrease $1,188 from account 240, tax collector. Decrease $6,525 from account 300, Planning and Development, decrease $2,929 from account 410, Building Inspections, decrease $51,686 from account 420, Police, decrease $5,754 from account 430, Townwide Radio, decrease $894 from account 440, Fire Marshal, Decrease $3,145 from account 510 engineering. Decrease $80,749 from account 520 physical services. Decrease $4,218 from account 620 social and youth services. Decrease $6,872 from account 700 public library. Decrease $7,146 
from account 800, Parks and Recreation, decrease $90,000 from account 920, Debt Services, decrease 58,000 from account 950, Transfers CIP CNEF, decrease $2,801,870 from account 965, State Teachers Retirement Contribution. Second. Yep. Okay. Um, baked into these numbers is the reduction in the health insurance. So some of these numbers for some departments like the police, 51,000, a lot of that is the health insurance delta. Okay. Uh, same with the library, that's all health insurance. It's, so you're, you're effectuating that, what it accounts to be a $93,000 cut throughout the departments, and that's what most of those are. Thank you for that clarification. Other discussion on that second motion? Tony? Uh, Paul, just one comment. It won't change the motion or the amounts. Uh, within the budget reductions that Jeff has given us under CIP, uh, I would recommend that the uh, 25000 come out of uh, the window account instead of the salt shed uh, account because that's in bad shape, and I think we need to get that done as soon as we can. So if we could just change that from uh, salt shed reduction to uh, window account reduction. That's a direction to the, to the managers. Any objection to that change? Well, go ahead, Mike. Before we vote on that, I would like to get clarification from the town manager. I mean, it, priorities are priorities. Uh, yep. um, I know the salt shed is on its literally a last leg, um, but the windows have been on the agenda for a number of years as well. Um, one thing about the windows is that if they are installed properly, as opposed to some modifications that have been done to the schools lately, that um, we would actually see a reduction in energy usage. So we, that may be savings down the line, down the road. There's not, uh, I think that's fine. The $25,000 is not gonna make or break a window project where you have the money available right now for more of a line in broken windows than replacing windows. Replacing windows is a, is a much larger project than what a reserve fund could accomplish. Okay. So I'm not concerned about the $25,000 cut. As we spoke Thursday, the cut and the location to me are two separate things. I don't wanna cut anything out of capital because we worked hard to grow that fund. So reducing by $25,000, wherever you take it from, reduces our investment in capital. So. The window account's fine, the salt shed account is fine. It's just, we have to be conscious of the cuts we make in capital since we are so far behind. What is the current cost, proposed cost of the salt shed? Uh, north of $400,000. How much is in that? 275. Would we get a state match? No. We're looking for any? There'd be no state money involved in that project. Jeff, is the 275, does it include any potential money from the gas tanks? No, that's just current what's in there. So we would anticipate having some funds left over from the gas tanks to shift to that line item. And we won't know yeah. that till late summer what's available. And then with the additional 25, if you put that back in, you would be pretty close to the salt shed. There's actually 50 in the CIP, 25. We were recommending a 25 because mm -hmm. we would know that there's another 25 plus what's in the salt shed. So losing 25 didn't send us off track in terms of our expectation with the CIP. When do you expect to, to have enough to to have the, to replace the salt shed? It really depends on what's available from the tank project. Hopefully one more round in CIP, we would have enough. The expectation would be that once this summer's over and the tank project is done, we could use some of the reserve, the funds set aside to actually design because we're gonna have drainage issues, HDC issues, those kind of things that we could embark on design, and then that would determine the final amount necessary. So in that case, I would concur with Yeah, the window that accounts the window fine. would be a better place for Does it. Does it matter for the purposes of the motion? No, no I would just say reduce the CIP by $25,000. Okay. Yeah, because there's other well, things, can, there's other things there's on, other in things there. That you can, we should discuss. I mean, those are conversations later on 
that you have with maybe Public Works takes that on and looks at those issues, but the 25 is the 25. Thank you. Other discussion from Council? Mike? And not to jeopardize, you know, public safety, that 51,686 from the police, that is not personnel. There's right. no bodies, no. In any no, it's $15,000 worth of costs we're shifting to the animal control fund to pay some animal control costs, and then the rest is health insurance. And $1,500 in oil that they're not using anymore. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, no. Sorry. Take that back. <laughs> no no take-backs. No. <laughs> You're a no, Mike. I am a no. Okay, he's, sorry he's about like that. He's like the state. He's going to take everything yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, John. Uh, All right. Do we have that clear? Who's we have I know? eight yes and one no. 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 Oh, we have we, You oh. only mentioned the ayes. And, uh, yeah, let's do it again. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. Okay. <laughs> a little clearer. So it's going to be 5-4. Correct. <laughs> Motion three, please. Motion that the budget as submitted by the town manager on April 3rd, 2017, be and hereafter is amended as follows <clears throat> to decrease the total appropriations for school purposes by $500,000. Second. Discussion? No discussion. Oh. Amy? Um, I'd just like to say that. Uh, at the $500,000 level, we were assured by the Board of Ed that there would not be staffing decreases, and so that was um, our, our factor in <coughs> coming to terms with that number. Yeah, just a couple of points about that I wanted to share since we were involved in discussions on, on this with the Board. I, I do want to thank the Board uh, in its entirety. It wasn't just the Board leadership that participated in those discussions. Uh, Obviously, during the course of April and into May, we had quite a bit of discussion. We also had a lot of public input and support for the board budget not being touched. And we had, of course, uh, some dissenters in public comment from folks who feel that the board budget needed to be cut. Um, the deliberation about how we arrived at mm -hmm. getting what I think is a sizable commitment from the board uh, without impacting programs, classroom space, teachers, um, is something that I deeply appreciated the board uh, struggled with and worked with us on. Um, I'm sure there's always dissent on this, but uh, I really believe the board understood the dilemma that we face, and I'm sure after the discussion early in the evening, the board understands that we may not be done, uh, depending on what happens with the state. Um, what I believe this represents is protection of our classrooms, our classroom size, and our teacher staff uh, assuming certain levels of retirement and attrition. We also shared with the board uh, that we expect as they go into the fiscal year next year, uh, bracing for what I think is, is going to be a continual struggle for funding, that there will need to be um, some set-asides, I guess, as the budget unfolds during the fiscal year next year that reflect that it's going to be much tougher. Um, but I, I do appreciate the conversations that we have at the board. There were many, many discussions with full council present uh, that we asked for full participation. I do uh, respect Mike uh, Hurley's commentary about that. Uh, we, we obviously understand uh, that there has to be continued conversations, sometimes arm twisting and pushing and cajoling and meeting personally with people to get them where they need to be. Um, we believe we've done uh, the absolute best we can without impacting programs and loss. And those are qualitative choices that uh, our leadership feels strongly about we want to preserve. So I want to thank the board for that uh, and their efforts. Never easy. Half a million dollar cut is, is still significant and impacts a lot of things that they're going to have to find their way through. So any other discussion points? Just Mike? Yeah, just that there was no real details given, so I'm not sure how we know that that was the the right amount since there was no details given, but that's all I have to say. Just a, a um, comment for the, the sake of the public. Um, and it's more of a knowledge um, point. Um, the non-union Board of Education administrative staff 
are proposed to receive an increase of 55,000 and they're already making good salaries over 100,000. So I just want to make sure that um, the public is aware, you know, that the, the non-union um, staff, there's a proposed increase. And it's significant. I mean, it may fall into that $500,000 category. It may not. But um, people just need to understand. Thank you. Don. Any other comments on this? Mike. Um, in the beginning, when again, when we discussed all the uh, um, proposed additions and deletions from the budget, um, we had the parents of a number of student athletes. Um, the swim team was here as well as uh, um, uh, lacrosse players. I just wanted to, I don't know if we would know the answer. Obviously, as you know, what Mike said, um, you know, Jeff did a great job by laying out the number of cuts that unfortunately are on the town side, but we don't know of the 500,000 which cuts would be included in um, or actual you know, possibility of uh, programs not even being funded in one of those programs being lacrosse. Do we know if lacrosse is funded in this budget? Proposed budget cut from the Board of Ed? Just to reflect back, Mike, when we looked at the million, uh, I'm sorry, the half million, million, and million five proposal to the Board back, I think, some four weeks ago, the Board provided us uh, the line items for those three levels of cuts, of which even the 500 uh, initially had uh, personnel cuts in it. Um, and it also had line items that we could see. <coughs> one, of the, one of the thoughts that I had in asking the Board to do that exercise is anticipating that if in fact we did have uh, the circumstances somewhere in between the governor's proposal and the legislature, uh, seeing those numbers up front, I think were eye-opening for us to look at the potential impact on loss of teachers. So I just want to point out there were line items in each of those three scenarios and then our, our go back to the board uh, looking at the 500, we asked for uh, their help in taking some of the items off the 500 appropriation cut that would involve staff loss. We did talk about lacrosse. I, I think the intent is to keep the lacrosse at the club level for this one year. I think that discussion has begun again. I think Mr. Emmett is involved in that discussion with that group. Um, the individual impacts on uh, programs, I, obviously we, we had that conversation. I believe they are still working on those little details uh, within the 500, but we got assurances that there would not be loss of programs or staff in the 500 uh, level which is how we arrived at that. So um, I guess I would reflect back or refer back as we will probably be coming back to this, hopefully not to the devastating extent that this governor is proposing, but the document that the board provided us at the million and million and a half level may very well come back in play. And there will be unquestionably, if that were to happen, uh, enormous impact on staff levels in classrooms. Uh, but I think we at least have a, a, a preliminary view of that based on what they provided in those line items. So there were line items, I think, shared with us, but. Any, any more other uh, line items shared that we might know about? No, there need to know different about. than we discussed, so. Yeah, Joey. So if you vote yes for this $500,000 $500, reduction, you're voting yes to eliminating a transition coordinator a director of security, no. the extracurricular activity, no, again, freshman we, we, sports. In the conversation we had with them, Jody, last week, we, we identified those items as urging not to be included, and they agreed. They would not include a cut of the security director or personnel. They're, they're looking at other line items in terms of non-programmatic line items. I'm, I, I, I'm hoping I'm characterizing this correctly because I'm, I'm using my terminology. But the security director is not being cut. The uh, SRO is not being cut. Um, there are no personnel and teacher cuts in this 500. Um, the line items that they're going to accomplish that with are not going to be personnel or programmatic level in terms of impact in the classrooms. Not sure how that you guys are going to achieve that, but Godspeed. Other comments? Well, Mike? Well, it begs the question then, what was discussed? I mean, Again, going back to what I had said, a half a million, a million and 1.5. 1.5, devastating. But we don't know what is in this half a million dollar cut. Um, 
and to be able to sit up here and vote on a half a million dollars, not knowing what would be cut, is you know, it does a disservice for the the residents and the the parents and the more importantly the kids in our school systems. Unfortunately, you know I would I would like to know, um, you know, no teachers are being cut. That's you know. The reality is, you know, we have we didn't make or somebody didn't make the hard decisions, but you know we're seeing layoffs at the state level today alone, a hundred people. Um, you know, it's it's unfortunate, but you know we should be we should at least be seeing what if no teacher um, layoffs are in there, what is in there? Other comments? Sir? From my perspective, I think what, what I want to know what's not in there, and what's not in there is teachers' programs. It's non-curricular items. So, as you know, we can't tell the board how to spend the money. We only have the power to give them a number. And I think you know, I know some folks wanted to to cut it by an even a larger number. At the end of the day, we never really know exactly where the cuts are going to come from. So. My view on it is I wanted to have assurance that certain things were not being cut. And, 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 and I'm comfortable uh, uh, with that assurance and with that number. So there are no details then? No, not okay. beyond what we've discussed. And I'm, <clears throat> I'm afraid that that's what's gotten on, uh, us into this predicament. Year after year, you know, assuming that reductions are gonna take place, then finding out a month or two later that there's a five hundred thousand dollar surplus, you know, if if you're making assumptions that um, there are revenue or you know figures that aren't realistically in there, then I, I can't fathom voting for something that doesn't have any substance to it. I mean, just my point, but. Well, I will share it, and I think the board would reiterate, and I think they shared this with us at their last meeting, they're still currently running a deficit on their budget and are trying to grapple with that. Uh, when we did the MBR re recalibration back in March, uh, provided, I think, $81,000 to them in the M MBR recalibration, that was at a time that I believe they still had about a two hundred and ten dollars or $15,000 deficit. Um, I'm sure based on everything that's happening and will continue to happen over the next few months that uh, it's unlikely there'll be a surplus and if there was a surplus I'm sure Mr. Emmett will be discussing with us his assistance with the profile that we have in front of us today. Can I ask um, just uh, I guess a, a motion of or not a motion but just recognize please moving forward that if we do have to go through some sort of reopener that you're envisioning that we get a detailed account of what that might look like with respect to the board of ed if we do have to go back to them because i think that we can all say we want to fight for what's best for our kids and it's tough to fight when you don't know what you're fighting for yeah, i agree I, again i'm going to reiterate that the million to million five <coughs> numbers do have specific line items that talk about the level of staff cuts and losses that I think give us a pretty good preview. Um, I'm hoping, of course, that we won't have to visit that, but if we do, I think we have a preliminary template that the board has provided us on impacts, uh, which are devastating, which we've seen already. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second. Item number three, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Item four. Motion <clears throat> Motion that the total appropriations for school purposes be set at $57,777,882 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. So the following ones are basically recaps of our discussion um, thereof, and they identify the totals that would be appropriated under this proposed budget. Um, so they're, they're really... Um, Total amounts that reflect what we previously went through line items, so they're uh, important to have that in our budget appropriation, the actual number. Any discussion about that number? We have a motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Item five. 
Motion that the town council adopt the town budget as submitted by the town manager on April 3rd, 2017, and as amended by the town council in the sum of $101,728,834 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Discussion? Mike? Um, in a percentage wise, what percent is what is now over a hundred million dollars um, this year's current budget um, proposal over the one that was adopted last year a tax increase micro or budget just simple budget budget uh, percentage, percentage. 2.97 right. 2.97 thank you Tom. thank you um, I, I know I started the, the discussion off at the very beginning about the inaction at the state and making it very difficult, but I do think we need to um, be cognizant of the grand list. Um, Jody mentioned the Assessment Board of Appeals. I mean, that was a pretty significant hit related to that. Maybe structure needs to be put around that for the future because that's not the first time that's affected, and our grand list doesn't grow a lot. Um, you know, you look at what Hartford's grand list grew and it was millions and ours grew 1.3% and then take that away with decreases from changes to the assessments. The other thing is MDC spending is spiraling out of control. Um, this year it's gone up 6.21% over what it was last year and it went up significantly last year. And while I understand that they have expenses, um, I think that all the member towns, and we did do some of that related to the resolutions in really trying to be firm and speak out, but I think the member towns need to work together to discuss a solution to the ad valorem tax. It's an unfair way to, um, it, it penalizes communities, and I just think that there's got to be a better way out there. But we're going to have to take that impetus as member towns because the MDC is not going to do that. I mean, this is great for them. They get whatever they want. And, and we have to take action on that um, as a community. And, uh, you know, I know last year I did say that we had to have those really difficult discussions about services in general. Mm -hmm. We started to do that, mm -hmm. but we didn't complete it. And, uh, you know, this next year is going to be a more difficult year just based on what's going on because if you can imagine that the revenues have been decreased at the state level this year, if they're decreased this year, then factoring in additional decreases next year just based on statistics, it's gonna be worse. And, and we're gonna be back here talking about the same issues over and over and we haven't done anything about it. Thank you, Donna. A couple of points. Uh, first, I want to, uh, the Hartford Grand List uh, growth, if anybody looked at the real detail, would know that it came on the backs of businesses. Um, I think uh, some members of our public pointed out, I think, during the discussion with Hartford that uh, housing is at 30 percent, uh, private residential housing is taxed at an assessment of 30 percent of the appraised value uh, as compared to our 70 percent. Um, and many, many businesses are feeling very painful impacts in Hartford with the adjustment of the grand list, which looks good on paper, but um, it's causing many of the businesses to flee Hartford. Um, one of the things that I think we've done in Wethersfield uh, with our, we're still 89% uh, tax at the private residence level in terms of the value of our grand list, but we, as you know, have had good progress with getting many businesses to fill previously empty buildings, and that is beginning to take hold. But it'll be at least a two or three year process before some of those projects that are falling in place will have impact on the grand list, including some of the uh, tax abatement, for example, on Ridge Road and uh, some of the projects. But um, I think you're absolutely right, Donna, that uh, when you look at the state, is what's happening with the state. You know, we've previously. Uh, <coughs> sort of dro drove along, I think, in Wethersfield, which is by any measure considered a fiscally sound community uh, with good reserves. We've, uh, as you know, uh, our bond rating agency probably puts us in the top 10 communities who have put money in in the last uh, 
seven, eight years to catch up on pension, which frankly was brought under your leadership, Donna, which uh, I, we've followed that very good lead and respect a great deal that you initiated that. And I see that as a very important message for us because when you see that progress that was made under your leadership on that topic, it did affect our bond rating, it did affect our cost for the high school, and we're seeing premium as a result. So we've done fiscally smart things, but you're correct that as we look at what's coming on the horizon, the story at the state level is much worse in the last six months than any of us could even have envisioned. And we are clearly going to be under enormous pressure as that trickles down, and we see what that looks like, uh, that we'll have to continue to revisit the concept of how we provide services and share it. I think we need to talk more about uh, regional shared costs. There has to be a dialogue about that. It's a, it's a taboo topic. It can involve education. It can involve services. There, it's difficult to execute that, but it is something we have to continue to talk about. And we also have to talk about, and we're going to see it in the next motion, we are continuing to try to stay in front of our roads to the tune of a million five. But when those impacts happen, if they do, and what unfolds in June impacts us, those are the kinds of things that are vulnerable because you got I so know. many of these things are not movable. So um, I think we've made progress in shared services uh, this year. Um, as we know, Keith is here tonight and, and uh, has led the way with sharing services on the technology, which has been an enormous uh, improvement and great success for the town. It may be small, but it's an indication of the direction we have to go. Um, and I'm sure all of us, if we are still here battling the budget pro process next year, uh, we'll be doing some of the things you just said, Donna. So uh, I agree. I have one comment about mm. There is a movement against, a, there is a movement among the member towns to have MDC revisit the movement away from an ad valorem tax on the towns towards a user fee. Um, how that happens, how that study gets done, the scope, is the subject of a meeting on Wednesday okay. between the member towns and the MDC. MDC historically has been against it, moving away from the ad valorem. Um, there's not a lot of energy now for it on the MDC board, moving away from the ad valorem. But there is uh, interest on the towns to revisit that issue. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Motion and a second in front of us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Item six. <clears throat> Motion that the total appropriations for the capital and non-recurring road fund be set at $1,500,000 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Any discussion on the road fund? Um, just want to say on behalf of Jeff's efforts and uh, Derek, who's been here this year, uh, we look forward to that continued effort. Uh, very important for our community. It is one of the most tangible improvements that we continue to make some progress on, and we're never going to get in front of it completely, but uh, this one's, I think, very important for our community. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The road one's always easy, isn't it? Number seven. I'd like to make a motion that total appropriations for library purposes be set at $1,969,620 for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2017. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Thank you, Brooke. I see you back there. Eight. Motion that the total amount to be raised by taxes for the town library, school, and capital and non-recurring roads fund purposes combined be set at $85,416,937 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Discussion? No discussion. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Item nine. Motion that the general fund tax rate for all real and personal taxable property be set at 39.29 mills for the physical year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Fiscal year. Um, commentary discussion. Please. Can, can we add a sentence excluding motor vehicle? Just 
tack that in somewhere. Yeah. Excluding motor vehicle. Can I get an amended and a second on the amendment? Motion to amend it, motion to say and like extend it to motor vehicle. Second. Exclude it. Excluding. Excluding. Excluding, excluding motor vehicle. Yeah, because that's going to be under the reimbursement rate. Second. Motion to second with amendment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 We're voting on the amendment, right? Yes, on the amendment. To add excluding to add, motor to exclude, vehicles. Yes. yes. You're okay with that? Okay. So that, that passes yes. Uh, now, number nine, with the amended language that the general fund tax rate on all real and personal tax property be set at 39.29 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2000, exclusive of the car tax. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Thank you. Ten. Motion of the general fund tax rate on all motor vehicles taxable property be set at 31.62 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Jeff, just one question about that. So if this goes to the 37 that's being proposed today, um, what, what, that one is still confusing to me. Like, what would we do since we pass it at 3162, reflecting the 32, I guess, that you're talking about? And if it comes in at 37, we would get additional funds from vehicles, and then how would, that would just be put back into our reserve? Well, the hope would be that we would come back and revisit the mill rate for all property and float the cars up to 37 as part of the reopener. Okay. But if we were going to do that, if, if that happens, you couldn't levy any more than 32 mills. So there'd be money. Without a reopen without discussion. A reopen. But as a, as a separate line item, do we have the capacity to reopen that discussion through motion subsequently? If it's the only thing that changes, let's say the teacher's pension doesn't, uh, get put in and the ECS is retained at the current level, but and they move this to 37 We'd have to get a reopener from the legislature to allow us to change that is this, correct. which which is something Can we make a motion to cap it at the statutory cap? So We have it at 32 if it goes up to 37. That is an excellent. Well It's the thought Because we're gonna you just approved a levy that's Yeah, based on okay yeah, and there is a statutory, and uh, we're going to sit on the tax bills. We're anyway. going to sit on the tax bills until the state finishes. So, if uh, we use Steve's approach and said that the the road, uh, the mill rate for for the car tax will match the cap by the state, would that still allow us the re the, the ability to move it? It's not an actual number that we're passing tonight. That's the problem, right? Because you can't no, plug okay. a number in. Well, the charter requires setting a mill rate. But the mill rate, could the mill rate be loosely defined as the cap established by the state? Or is that not strong enough a wording? How do you generate a bill? Well, we're not going to generate the bill until this is discussed. Well, we but generate a bill based on whatever <coughs> statute. Yeah. In June or July, whenever we send out August. the bills. Or whatever July that, 1st starts the that cap fiscal is. year. That, What's your what if we don't it's know your what comfort that is? Level. I'm comfortable with that because the statutory language is going to rule. At that, the time, the same as it is tonight. Right. Right. But that statutory language could be 37 mills. Yes. Which would allow us to move it, which would be better for residents. I mean, well, I guess it would be better in the sense that we would have the revenue matches what we currently are doing or closer. Well, it's not always better to take more money. No, 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 I know, but it's still lower than we're getting on the car tax. The, the movement on the car tax is, is, is obviously a philosophical one, but it's With, lower. Without right. moving the motor vehicle rate, what you're doing is compounding the issue on real property owners. Right. So those people that live in town and just pay motor vehicle would see a benefit and those people that pay real property taxes would see an increase in burden. So the idea would be to re-level that playing field. So we can reduce the other mill rate that was just voted on? Well, no. what you would see is revenue from the motor vehicles because the expectation is this, in your budget you have $940,000. That's offsetting that number mm -hmm. from 37 to 32, right? If you go back to 37, you can anticipate that that money won't materialize <coughs> but we'll get 1.4 so we'll get five hundred thousand dollars so more. You, we would recalculate the mill rate at some different rate other than 39.22 we can do that with a reopener the expectation okay. is you would recalculate only everything. with a reopener so why don't we wait for the reopener for everything if it's going to reopen 
I don't know. Just I don't know what's going to reopen. Right. That's the expectation. But then we'll just be overtaxing people if it doesn't reopen. At the thirty-seven, you mean? Yeah. Well, no. If you use the, I think if you use the language that the the cap established by the state, um, you're matching what reality is. I think it's a good suggestion to do it that way because we are going to have a real number. They're going to have to provide us a cap. If they're going to, if the one exists, I mean, we're told it's going to be 37. Jeff is following the, the legislative bill at 32, because that's the only <coughs> thing that's been approved. But I think if it were to move to 37, it provides some relief for the homeowner piece of our tax-generated mill. So we can case. reduce the 39.29 then, mm -hmm. even if we approve this. That depends on your other revenue mixes. But I thought we couldn't do it unless there's an opener. Yeah, no, I think right. there's got to be an opener. I mean, I, I think the no same thing would apply. Then if the mill rate... We're just going to tax people more at the 37. But I thought at the 37, we're not getting the 900,000. So, yeah, we get 1.5. Right. Well, the, the reality of it is, our guess is as good as anybody else's right now. And that's all we're doing, is we're making a guess. On the mill rate piece. On all of this <coughs> is a guess. So you can argue all these different points. The reality of it is, this is a guess. So, well, no one's is any better or any worse than everybody I mean, else. I think, we know, I think we know, just to be a little more, I, I give our public a little more confidence than that it's a guess. I mean, obviously, the, the open items that are up for discussion at the state level will impact us undoubtedly if they were to occur. Um, but what we're doing, just to remind people to go back to the first discussion, we're still, I believe, operating in good faith with the charter and communicating to our community uh, the, the parts that we control, which is the vast majority of our budget, obviously, is still within our control. Not that $5 million of moving parts at the state level that could impact us is insignificant. It would be hugely significant. But we are passing motions tonight to approve a budget on behalf of our community so they have a template for our operating budget that is the vast majority in our control. Um, so I, I do think it's, it's again, this is a, a grappling choice that we're making. Uh, that I think reflects uh, discussion with our town manager and our finance director about uh, the language of the charter, their interpretation. I'm, I've taken Jeff's lead on that in, in addition to looking at the language. But I, I do believe that we are on firmer ground adopting our budget this evening, reflecting the vast majority of these moving parts that we do control. Um, the mill rate on the cars is obviously uh, a discussion that's happening at the state level. We're told it's going to be 37. <coughs> Legislatively, it's 32. So Jeff is taking the conservative approach of the 32. Um, but I, if it's really up to the pleasure of the council if they want to have that language reflect the approved mill rate of the legislative body, because we will have that time to impose it, because we're going to hold the bills. But I think it's up to you guys on that one. Paul, if that were to occur, it would, in the, if it were, if they moved it to the 37, they yep. guarantee that, because by statute it's at 32, yep. based on the language that was passed, yep. and there's no reopener. I think that's why it might be good to have this language in here, because we could, we've, we've reflected a budget that says at the past legislative bill, okay. so we could do it at 37. That's why I think it gives us a little cover. I, I think it's worth doing. It might just tax people more, though. Well, if you think about it, the, the revenue sources at the, the, the mill rate against homes and the mill rate on cars, at the end of the day, we're passing. Or, let's assume everything went our way and the state issues got resolved without the other impacts. Our total revenue sources that we're voting on tonight are going to be identified and our expenses are going to be identified. The revenue number is not going to change, but it's going to shift within itself between the 32 and the 37 and take relief on the housing side. If I'm understanding what you said correctly, right? I mean, we're, if we, if the mill rate on the cars goes up, there's relief on the house, on the real property. Real side. property. That's so it's, but it's still a close. But only if there's a only reopener. There's an opener. Unless we, unless we put the language in at the, at the, at the what Steve is suggesting, which is the past legislative. I think that if we put that in there, I think that doesn't require a reopener because if it's 37, we put language in here that says we would do it that way. Right. Before, before the bill passed last year or the year before. They matched. They were equal. Um, right. The legislature has said now it's capped at 32. But I think it gives us cover if there isn't a reopener that at least that number floats. That number, and again, 
the statutory number, whatever that is, not to exceed, obviously, our 39.29, right. in case they take it away entirely. But that way, it, it, worst case, it's where we were a year before. I know you folks weren't in favor of that bill in the first place, so um, it gets us. It just seems like we'll be It gets us to where we were two years ago where you are. No, if, no, if there's no reopener for the property, then we're just taxing people more. At the, at the 32, Mike? At the 37. If they'd raise it to 37. No, I'm, I'm, okay. But if they pass, if the legislature passes a cap at 37, we've got to follow that. Yeah. Right. But they would have to give us a reopener to do that. As a standalone, if we were reflecting in this language that the mill rate for uh, motor vehicles would be taxed at the cap provided by the state, if that language was in here, we would not require a reopener to an honor that number because the, the language of our budget adoption would match that number. We just be, the, if, it's, if we do it at the 32 today and it goes to 37, we will have to go back, either absorb that difference or get reimbursed from the state, which is, I think, a bigger question mark. So I, I get the point you're saying. I'm just trying to decide which is the safer route. I, I think it's safer for us to put the language in to, uh, to have the mill rate for car property tax not to exceed our current rate, but to be capped at the state's cap. And it allows us not having to reopen that. And you're holding the bills anyway. So in theory, if they cap it at 37, you, you would be able to calculate that, Mike, and we would be whole. If you're hesitant on it, I don't want to do that. I mean, you're the better measure of that. Let me just add one more thing to the discussion. And add, you've, you've done two things already. You've passed a levy, and you've passed a mill rate on non-motor vehicle property. In order to do what you'd like to do with this motion that's on the table, you have to allow, if, if the mill rate on motor vehicles were to by virtue of the wording that you passed tonight, rise to the 37 mills, if that's what state statute is, you would also have to see the other mill rate on non-motor vehicles go down to meet the levy that you approved. The levy won't change as long as you let both of those mill rates float, but you can't let one float mm -hmm. and then hold, and, and then in motion number nine, hold that at 39.29. Yeah, so the 39.29 then becomes a problem. Well, be, well the right. levy becomes the problem because right. we're going to be taking the money in. If you, don't, if you don't adopt wording that gives you flexibility on both of those mill rates, which I would imagine you could find a way to do that, as long as you let both of those mill rates float subject to the statutory mill rate on motor vehicles such that you arrive at the levy, that you approved, which is a levy that meets the need, you know, to, to fund the, the expenditures. The amount, raised, the amount raised is the levy. Yep. That number stays the same. It's just we're going to be mm -hmm. turning. It stays the that. same as long as you let both rates float. If you mm -hmm. if you let the motor vehicle come up to 37, the non-motor vehicle will come down from the 39.29 to right. some other level. It would be adjusted down to reflect the obviously the proportional difference. It's bigger on the housing. So I suppose it, it might just involve undoing motion or you know what was adopted in motion number nine. What would the language be, Mike, on that? If we if we if we want the mill levy at thirty nine twenty nine to ref would it be uh, or or at at such rate? You okay. know, I guess you could say something to the effect that the thirty nine point two nine is based on the thirty uh, the thirty two mill motor vehicle rate right. or such rate. Um, to achieve the well, levy. Such rate that, uh, that allows for the collection of the levy should the amount should. approved by the council in its proportionate share between the general fund and the road levy fund. Right. That sounds and great. In the motor vehicle tax. Yeah. Let me just think about that word for a minute because it's kind of important. We will. It just won't be a number. Um, 
Well, I want to get some yeah, language. Charter issue. I, I just want to get some language in front of us. Um, can we can we take a five minute recess? And I just want to have you guys give me some language. I want to see. Well, that. again, uh, yeah, well, let's take a five minute recess because we can talk about. Can I get a motion for a recess? So moved. Second. In favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Let me just uh, get up with you, Mike. Let's get some language. Well, the issue is the charter requires a set Council.
Can I get a motion? Should we go back into session? We're going to move on to second. So you're up. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we're going to we're going to let Mike finish the language on those. So we're going to go to other business and let him return to finish that. So let's move to three B. Make a motion to accept the revised fee schedule for the community center and Solomon Wells House as recommended. Can I get a second? Second. Jeff? I'll ask Kathy Bagley, Kathy. Director of Parks and Rec, to review this item with you. Hi, Kathy. Good evening. Um, before you tonight are fee revisions for both the community center facility and the Solomon Wells House. Working with staff and then the Park Board with the community center rates and the um, Salmon Wells House rates with the Salmon Wells House Committee were giving you their recommendations tonight to raise the fees in both facilities for um, different amounts and I believe you have them in your packet. And basically if you look at them, we haven't raised <laughs> fees in a while and um, the reason being is we've been generating the revenue and keeping our costs within reason. Recently, with um, minimum wage increases and uh, union contracts, some of our um, staff costs have grown, and so those now impact how much money we take in for revenue. So we're looking to balance that out again and look at the fees that way. And the community center, as you notice, there's many different rooms and they, they all have different fees based on their size and what their amenities are in each room. Questions about this for Kat? Paul? Yeah, Amy, go um, ahead. Kathy, how do your fees compare to surrounding towns? We looked at that too in terms of um, uh, the age of our buildings, our facilities, and we're fairly close. We try to look at market rates all the time because if we're too high, we don't get the bookings, and if we're, um, we never want to be too low. So, um, so we do look at them, and we're in the ballpark with some facilities, and some facilities are just out of our reach. And this fee schedule is, is part of the budget? Yes. Right now? The revised or the current? The revised. You voted on a revenue item that included the increase in the fees. Well, we actually, either actually yeah. you did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said we did. No, no, they did. No, oh, they didn't. voted against it. We voted against it. So, oh. yeah. so how can we vote on this after the fact? I guess is the question. Because you would have asked me after you adopted the budget if those fees increases were in the budget, and I would have said yes. So we told you ahead of time that we were doing that. Well, rather than rather than recalculate everything after. Because hey, aren't we going to put the fees in? The, yeah. It was kind of a chicken and egg thing. Couldn't you have done the fees first? Well, we did the budget first because it's a kind of a hundred and one million dollar item versus a three thousand dollar item. But now, you, I guess you guys have the numbers, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Other questions for Kath? Kath, is there a board that reviews this, or do you do this with your staff? Um, with the staff, we make recommendations for the community center to the park board, park board. Yeah, and for thought. the Salmon Wells House to the Salmon Wells House Committee. And they all met and reviewed They them. met and reviewed them. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm just confused. So if I want to support this, though I said no to your revenue package, how does that square up? Well, you also said no to all the other revenues, too. So... But they passed. I mean, the point is that the budget passed on that section, so. I don't know. You voted no against the, I, I'm sure you didn't vote against this line item. You voted against the blanket that had these Correct. within it. So Correct. We, it passed so that these, these, can, be, these can be entertained and, and, and voted on. And, in fact, if you think about it, yes, you can make the argument you support this but not the total package, which is why you voted against it, which is fine. I think people would understand that distinction. Um, if, if we were to vote against it, then obviously we're voting against something we already passed. But I would, the, the reason that I support it is because both committees that oversee these operations have recommended it, looked at the comparables, and found us to be not within the market rate. The, the point I'm making, Jody, you could support this without necessarily being inconsistent with your opposition to the 
passage of the line items that included this because Correct. I don't think you voted against it based on this you voted against it because of the number no so I'm just wondering process wise why we wouldn't just do the fee increases first that way it matches up well, with the yeah that would have been probably sensible if we had thought it through or thought we were going to come across this but obviously we didn't do that we started with the budget so I, I, I don't think it's a major material point but um, any other points about this Mike uh, Kathy thank you uh, looking at these uh, the community center was last revisited or revised in 2009. Salmon Wells House, 10 years ago, 2007. Um, it has been a very difficult last six, seven years for taxpayers in the state of Connecticut. Um, we saw it with the increased uh, budget this that we just, you know, um, deliberated. I, you know, I can't not for the same reason that Jody had mentioned having to put the cart before the horse on this, but I can't fathom you know, voting to raise fees um, on residents right now. I mean, the variables and the, the unknowns coming from the state and um, tax increases, uh, fee increases from the state, everything's on the table. I, we're we're going to squeeze the public out, unfortunately. And no um, disservice to you, Kathy. I mean, you're simply recommending what the boards are telling you. Um, but I don't think that um, putting additional burdens on our residents with fee increases at a time where we're looking at the possibility of hundreds of millions of dollars being cut from the state to municipalities is not uh, appropriate right now. So I'll be voting no on this. And, and I get that, um, but this, the user fees are just those, things that people use, they get to pay for, and that offsets impacts to residents that don't utilize those facilities. So these fees are put in place so that the people that use these facilities pay for that benefit, and those people that don't use those facilities are relieved somewhat of the burden of their operation. So I think that's the nature of a yep. user fee. Any other comments here? Points? Discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Cap. 3C. I would like to make a motion to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept a state grant for a police and youth program for an amount up to $10,000. Second. Motion and a second. Jeff? I'm going to ask Kathy to keep going. <laughs> okay. And I'll ask Erica to, Erica to come up also. This is the third year of a grant that we've had it for two years. We're in the second year of it now, and for next year would be the third year. You're allowed to apply for up to three years. We may or may not get it, but it certainly is an opportunity to try. It's a grant that comes um, out of... OPM. It's the OPM. And um, it encourages uh, students to work with the police in a um, more social, recreational environment where they get to interact with each other. And we've had it now, we're in the mid, almost at the end of the second year, and it's been a very po positive experience for both the police and the students. And we'd like to apply for it again. Thank you. Uh, discussion from council? Seeing none, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. 3D. Motion to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept a state matching grant program for elderly and disabled dis demand responsive transportation dial a ride expansion grant in the amount of $31,733 for Wethersfield and $89,436 total, and to sign a memorandum of understanding with the town of Newington and Rocky Hill to provide Tri-Town Medical Transportation Service. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Kathy? This is a grant that we've gotten for many years that allows us to do expanded service for our dial-a-ride for medical appointments in towns that we don't normally can go to based on our basic service. 
It's also in conjunction with Newington and Weathersfield. We, oh, Rocky Hill. We are Weathersfield, I can remember. And um, it's, uh, it allows the three towns to work together and provide additional rides that are, that are all for medical appointments. Questions about this discussion? Is this all, I'm um, sorry, Kathy, is this all under the Curtin um, contract or is this a separate provider? It's, it is with Curtin. Uh, actually, uh, Weathersfield, we're the administrator and we use Curtin in the three towns for this expanded service. Thank you. Yeah. Is this something that's in danger at the state level? Not that we've heard of. They've, uh, they've contacted us and told us to go ahead and apply for it. Okay. Other questions? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Um, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Thank you. Four A. I'd like to make a motion to approve the upgrades to the computer server at the Weathersfield Police Department as requested. Second. I know uh, you guys are here, Chief, and uh, come on up and maybe take us through this. I know you guys are finishing this process. The servers at the police department have been there since we moved into the police department in 2003. They should have been upgraded all along, but they haven't. Uh, and I don't profess to understand exactly what the technology is behind this, so I brought somebody with me. But in case you have any technical questions. What I've decided to do, because we need to upgrade these servers to be able to use some of the technology that we have and I plan to have in place, with asset forfeiture funds, we're going to upgrade uh, the servers at the police department with your approval. Okay. Uh, discussion or questions about this project? Jody? Chief, thank you. I just wanted to say that during the budget process, we did talk about uses of asset forfeiture, and I think that this is a fantastic one, so thank you. Thank you. Mike? So what exactly has to be upgraded? since you're here tonight. Good evening, thank you very much. I'm Master Officer David Gove. <clears throat> um, first moment on the stage. The, uh, the servers, uh, we have currently seven servers that are running at the police department uh, that are exclusively to the functions, day-to-day -day operations of the police department. Of those seven, um, five of them are past end of life. Two of them are our CAD and RMS servers, and three of them handle backup data and mobile messaging uh, applications. The two that are current are our domain controllers. The proposal set forth will virtualize everything. So instead of a number of physical servers, we're only going to have three servers um, and then a separate storage array connected by networking. What this allows us to do is create brand new virtual servers, theoretical virtual servers, as many as we want with the uh, program and the uh, setup set forth. Uh, for training environments, testing environments, so we don't have to worry about breaking a server if we install new software or patches, which has happened in the past, and then we have to scramble to fix those things. This proposal allows us to have um, redundancy in case of failure. It allows us to have the capacity to move forward um, within or through the next decade, I'd say, as well, uh, with what we've set forth for specifications. It also includes a backup device to back up every virtualized server in case of failure. So in case something gets hypothetically deleted or a power surge or something scrambles the servers, we have everything saved right there. It moves us into the next phase uh, of everything. The storage device uh, moves away from spinning disk, which is slow, and brings us to all flash storage. Um, and the specification is, is going to give us over 16 terabytes minimum of storage. And the uh, backup server will give us upwards of 20 raw terabytes of storage as well. So this will be um, a system that's well suited to keep the police department current with, uh, with our estimations for approximately the next decade. Other questions? Thank you. Mike? Not so much a question, but just a, a comment. Having read the Harvard Current this morning, uh, Sheep, uh, you were quoted in there with the computer database 
Um, does this affect that? And congratulations, by the way. I mean, Wethersfield is one of only a handful of towns that is abiding by the 2007 law. Um, does this have any impact on that? Uh, yes. It does? Yes, because our RMS is actually on the servers for sieges, and this will allow us to have a much better or faster conduit between the two. Great. Congratulations again. Thank you. Um, what is this, just the security of this? Because I, we're recently seeing all these things about um, malware, right? Things happening. I'll turn this back over to you. Yeah. I'll also go. One of the proposals set forth by the vendors, SHI quoted uh, us to use Windows Server 2016, which is the latest release. The other uh, proposals were for Server 2012. It's a little older. 2016 will get us licensed and supported out further than Server 2012 will be. Uh, currently, Microsoft has said uh, released an extended uh, uh, patching system for Server 2012 till the year 2023. We anticipate uh, Microsoft Windows Server 2016 to be supported well past that. So what that will do is eliminate the need for us to purchase new licensing for Windows Server as well, keeping us uh, as, as current as we possibly can be. It should address that uh, pretty, pretty well. And I also would like to add, if I could, that um, Keith Raffanello from the Board of Education and his team uh, working together with Shared Services really was, was uh, instrumental uh, in working through this project. Um, so they should also be commended for their work as well. Further discussion, questions? And you guys saw the um, ad, the agenda item ad with the attachments, right? For why they. Just the price. Yeah. Yeah. Put the price so, and the pricing is on there. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 4B. Motion to award the bid for improvements to Cloverdale Pond to. Schumach Engineering Construction for $108,740 and a transfer of $38,665 from the drainage improvement reserve to the Cloverdale Pond Improvement Project. Second. Thank you. Derek. Good evening, members of the council. Um, here tonight, uh, seeking approval for award of the Cloverdale Pond Project to Schumach Engineering Construction out of Clinton. Um, as you're aware, uh, I'm sure many of you are aware, this project's been around for, for quite a while. Uh, the town, town has allocated funds to it. Um, we did hire a consultant back in 2011 to do a study of the Groff Brook watershed, in particular, uh, this particular pond, uh, to look at what could be done to improve water quality, kind of the aesthetics of the area. We have some structural deficiencies with the concrete spillway that's out there now. So we had put it out to bid. Uh, we had a good response. We had 12 bidders. Uh, Schumach came in as the low bid. They have a lot of experience based on the reference checks with doing this kind of work that is in FEMA floodplain, it's in a water course. The project will involve removing sediment from the pond, restoring the pond depth to about a four or five foot depth, which will improve water quality, replacing the concrete spillway that right now we have some training walls and some walls that are coming apart, putting that back together, doing some regrading around the pond, clearing out debris to help town staff better maintain the pond that's located on uh, town property at the south end of town off of Cloverdale Circle, as well as providing some uh, flood control. Uh, right now, very frequent storm events tend to flood some of the abutting properties to the north of the town property. As part of the project, we've worked very closely with Army Corps of Engineers and DEP to design a small berm on the north side of the project, which will help contain the flood levels on the town property and keep them off of the abutting properties uh, much more than it currently occurs. So, um, like I said, based on my reference checks, they, they are a very reputable firm. I've talked to a number of municipalities or um, consultants that work, uh, represent municipalities that have been working with them for 25 plus years. Um, they're usually very happy when they get the jobs. They do good work. They have a lot of experience, like I said, with this type of project. Um, so with that, we are recommending award to them. Um, as you can see, the bids came in on quite a wide range. Uh, their price was very consistent with what our consultant had put together for pricing, so it was in the ballpark of where we expected they would be. Um, and just looking forward to starting the project. Uh, if approved, 
Right now, construction is expected for start in the midsummer when we have the driest weather, complete the work in July, August time frame. Thank you. There are questions on the project for anybody? Mike Rell. Thanks, Derek. Um, just looking at some of the um, funds, to date the town has allocated 81,150 uh, in CIP funds to this project. So is that on top of the 108,000 or are we using 81,000? We're using 81,000. Okay. There has been more historically uh, budgeted there was an original amount to do the engineering which we've done and then there was an amount uh, of eighty thousand dollars put into cip several years ago to actually do the work so the 81 is what's the original 80 for construction and the 1000 or so is what's left over from the engineering amount. okay uh, we are allocating 108,740 to the firm, construction firm, to do it, and then transfer of 38,000 from the drainage improvement reserve to Cloverdale for the project. So in total, it's just shy of a $150,000 project? 130, something like that. 109 and 39, 148. What is the 39? Uh, 38665 from the drainage improvements reserve. Well, the total construction is 108 plus the 25 we've spent on engineering. So, yeah, somewhere between 235 and 250. 135. 135, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mike? How much is in the drainage improvement reserve and was it reserved for something else? The reserve is a accumulation of other projects who, who have unspent funds and we collapse them into their particular reserve line items. So in the drainage reserve line item there is Derek, will the, when you're done, will the pond actually be back? I mean, there used to be a pond. Now it's sort of like a grunged up stream, but will that pond somehow be recaptured as part of the berm? Yes, what we're, what we're looking to do is take, take about 500 yards of sediment that's collected, which is road sand and erosion just over many years. The town doesn't use road sand anymore, but over, historically it did. So it collected in the pond. It's been tested. It's uh, been tested as being suitable for reuse on site. So we're going to take that material out of the pond, let it dewater it on site, and then use that con construct. We're talking about about a three-foot high berm along the northern property line, which provides more of a bowl for when those higher storms come through. Right now, it fills up and overtops the berm and spreads onto other properties. With that, we'll be able to contain it on the town property. We are restoring the depth to about four or five foot depth. So yes, the idea with the project is kind of restore it as a, a neighborhood amenity, make it a pond again, um, you know, correct the deterioration of the spillway, which is, is getting worse and worse over time. Thank you. So that'll affect the properties um, on Fox Hill Road, are those? Ones? Yes, there's some properties on Fox Hill that back up to it that, okay. uh, from what I understand, frequently experience some ponding in their backyards as a result of the, the overtopping of the berm. No further discussion? Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, let's see. Finally, 4C Munis renewal. Make a motion to approve an amendment to application service provider agreement with Tyler Technologies for another three years, commencing July 1st, 2017 expiring June 30th, 2020 at the proposed amount of $349,000, 563. Second. Second. Thank you. Mike. Uh, yes, Mike O'Neill, uh, finance director. This item is, uh, it's an amendment to the current contract that was first executed back in 2006 with Tyler Technologies for the town and the Board of Ed's uh, financial management system. Munis. Um, this is uh, 
It's a three-year renewal. It's uh, less than 1.5% increase uh, per year from the price that we're currently paying annually now. Uh, the total increase for the three years over the previous three-year extension is about $14,000. Thank you. Questions on this? Seeing none, uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Okay, so we have modified motions for the budget adoption that I think we need to take a minute here to read through as a council. So why don't we do that? We'll have to reopen nine, assuming this is acceptable. Mike, thank you for giving us that proposed language. I think we'll, our first uh, requirement would be to get a motion to repeal number nine so we can reopen with this new language. So uh, can I get a motion? To motion under item B3A to uh, rescind item number nine that was voted on previously. Second. A motion a second. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Okay, so the motion passes, so nine will be reopened. So let's go to nine new language as proposed by Michael Neal. I get a, a motion okay. to read that into the motion record. To, motion that the general fund tax rate on all real and personal taxable property, excluding motor vehicles, be set at 39.29 mills for the physical year beginning July 1, 2017, which is, a, which is fixed at a point sufficient to produce a total amount to be raised by taxes of 85 million four hundred and sixteen thousand nine hundred thirty seven dollars or at such other rate which in combination with an amended statutory mill rate cap on motor vehicles is likewise sufficient second discussion so obviously what this does with this new language is allows for us to stay within the parameters of the tax uh, generation for the fiscal year proposed and a mill rate but it gives us the opportunity without a reopener to uh, reflect any change in mill rate cap on the motor vehicles. Discussion about this? You need another minute? Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, take another minute. With it. Uh, further discussion? So just for clarity then, statutorily we're going to be going to a 32 mil rate effective <clears throat> July 1 this year, I would imagine. I don't know. It's effective now. The statute requires 32 mils for this upcoming fiscal year. It's in statute now. Okay. To begin July 1st. Yes. So without any action on behalf of the legislature, the 32 mills <coughs> will stand. 
And if it goes up to 37 mils, would we see a decrease in the mill rate on real property? It would depend entirely upon the mix of funding available for the budget at that time. And the reimbursement, right? Or it's going to depend on the funding mix. Because your mill rate, for the most part, is determined by the amount to be raised by taxes, but you also have a series of revenues in there other than the car tax that you're making certain assumptions on. Assumptions if on. those assumptions change for the better, meaning we get more money, then overall the mill rate should go down. If we get less revenue overall, the mill rate will go up. Uh, when would we have to, is there a date specific that we need to have property tax bills go out to residents? I don't know of a property tax. I don't know of a date certain, um, but we run into cash flow problems come the fall. Mm -hmm. And would this affect the October grant or October, um, yeah, I guess grand list or um, tax bill for residents? If we did go from 32 to 37, decrease real property down, when would we be sending out a bill for October's taxes that are due? When do we send out the supplementals? January, late December. Okay. So this wouldn't have. I don't think so. It's, and we. Right, and we couldn't send out a tax bill that was illegal. Right. So. So we would have to hold off until the state determines what the car mill rate would be. Yes, to unless affect. we went ahead and sent out a bill based upon 32, then send a revised bill if the rate was allowed to go up. If it was to go up. If it was to go up. Okay. But there would be no revised bill if the real property went down, the mill rate on real property went down. I don't see us sending out a tax bill with an unknown real estate property tax levy. Okay. Now, you could always send out a supplemental bill, but again, if you're in, you, your concern is over taxation. Mm hmm Just have to play it out. <laughs> Does the reevaluation affect any of this? No. Because that's not till the following? That would be next year's grand list. Yeah, Mike. I had a question on. Um, <clears throat> so if we do come in $4 million short on revenue, our only option is to raise taxes on our residents? Because this is the only out we have, is to change the mill rate. So now we don't have an option to change our expenses, the only option we have is to charge our residents more. If there's a reopener, you can reopen all of it. No, I'm saying without a reopener, we're just changing this around to make sure we can charge people more, a lot more taxes. Yes, you set your appropriation and the amount to be raised by taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't agree with that. Well, no, you've capped the amount you're going to raise by taxes. You have set your maximum tax levy. <coughs> so if your revenues come from other sources come in short, you have to cut your budget <coughs> to account for it because you've already but set only your on the town side. No. Well, yeah, because you've set your levies for the other two. Correct. Yeah. So this doesn't seem like a great idea. No. Well, none of them. I mean, okay. Well, the assumption on reopening is that we're, there's everything is going to be reopened. We've had that discussion with the board as well. I mean, if this the teacher pension thing well, comes down and the other uh, impact, if they cut ECS and we have a reopener, which we've discussed with the, the legislative body, teacher's pension. Er, everything's going to be o opened up. And there's up. no reason for this. this what? We're having this language. I'm comfortable that this, this language gives us the flexibility should there not be a reopener. And should the motor vehicle cap go up? If, it, if, if there's a reopener, it's probably not necessary, but this gives us a little bit of flexibility. 
Yeah, this is this change is only to address the potential impact of a change in car cap. Right. Everything that Mike's talking about, which would be a much bigger topic, is going to have to be subject to reopen. Correct. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. What, what are we? Which one are we voting on? Number nine. Number nine. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you. Ten. Motion that the general fund tax rate on all motor vehicle taxable property be set at thirty-one point six two mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, twenty seventeen which is fixed at a point sufficient to produce a total amount to be raised by taxes of $85,416,937 or at such other rate which in combination with an amended statutory mill rate cap on motor vehicles is likewise sufficient. Second. Discussion. Donna. I have a question. So looking at number 10, looking at number 11 and looking at number 12 is 10 linked with 12 to be the 32 um, uh, rate mill rate there's a typo. related to the cars there's a typo in 11 that should be that the general fund right mike yeah. no that's it is cnef the first two are general fund Okay. Uh, yep. I get you. Right, board. That's what Donna's answer, though. Go ahead. I don't know. Yeah. So she just wants to know how you're coming up with the 32 mills. You're separating out the uh, number 12 added to number 10 should give you the 32. That's 32, correct. All right. Then what? What does 11 go to? With nine. That's. Combine those, those are the, the 39.77. That's the mill rate. So the, the actual mill rate is 39.77. Yes. And it, it funds both the general fund and the road fund. Right. Did that answer it, Donna, for you? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. And it did, but it didn't. It did, but it didn't. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you, so. if you look on this sheet, it's the revenue spreadsheet along the top, and it, sometimes it helps to just see everything in one place. You can see the levy and how, it, how it's broken down, how that $85.4 million breaks down between the two classes of property, if you will, motor vehicle and non-motor vehicle, and between the road fund and the general fund. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you for that. That, that helped. Mike, you had a question? Not a question. Well, yeah, it is a question. Um, 39.77, which we've agreed now is 0.38 in 12 added to 39.29 in 9. Um, where does that 39.77 bring us in relation to mill rates in our surrounding towns? Are we? I don't know what the other towns have done for mill rates. Actually, rate. yeah. I mean, we wouldn't know because they're in the same process we are in right now. Right. And but some of them, based upon today's outcomes, have received less revenue than they adopted their budgets with. Right, that they had already adopted yes. their budgets with. Well, they so they are going to have to effectively reduce expenditures. They're going to have to figure that out. Okay. So we don't, we can't say 
we are in the top 10 or bottom 10 of mill rates for the state. It's kind of an unknown right now, but looking at 39.77. I would say it's higher than most. Is higher than most. Yes. Based upon, you know, looking at prior to this budget season. Um, you know, it's a position I, I wouldn't want to be in for, uh, for our town, unfortunately. Again, you know, uh, I know we are dealt the hand that we're, we're you know, playing with the hand that we've been dealt with from the, the state, but going up to a 39.77 mill rate is, uh, that's a tough uh, uh, figure to swallow for, uh, not only for me, but for <coughs> other residents. Thank you. Further discussion, comments, or questions? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. 11. Motion of the capital and non recurring roads fund tax rate on all real and personal property, uh, taxable property excluding motor vehicles, be set at 0.48 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017, which is fixed at a point sufficient to produce a total amount to be raised by taxes of $85,416,937 or at such other rate which in combination with an amended statutory mill rate cap on motor vehicles is likewise sufficient. Second. Further discussion? So this is specifically the road tax piece identified, correct? But this is specifically the, the road tax tied to any change in number nine. Correct. No, number 10. No, oh, number I nine. I think nine goes with 11. I'm gonna add them up. Any change in number nine? Yeah. Nine's influenced Influences eleven in the they, same they way. All, yeah, all, they all—they're all basically tied. Together. Yeah, they all float together. Oh, okay. And so they're all—they're the, all controlled by the levy that was passed in motion number eight. So the point four eight will not get us one point five million. The point four eight? Yeah. Uh, no. Will not get us the one point five million in the road fund. Mm -hmm. It gets us one. It gets us that in combination with the point three eight on motor vehicles okay and, it, and and the loss of money and the loss of money so why do we need to change these two then if the 0.48 and the 0.38 get us the 1.5 then why do we need to change these because the 0.38 is the what that that value is dictated by the statutory cap on motor vehicles and again the proposal was if that changes you know, we try to accommodate a change with yeah, this language. in all four levels. Okay. okay. Further discussion or questions? <laughs> Seeing none, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Extensions? And 12. Motion that the capital and non-recurring roads fund tax on all motor vehicle taxable property be set at 0.38 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017, which is a fixed at a point sufficient to produce a total amount to be raised by taxes of $85,416,937 or at such other rate which in combination with an amended statutory mill rate cap on motor vehicles is likely sufficient. Mm -hmm. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, a motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions, thank you. Uh, we have
Before we uh, get any approval of the minutes before public comment, any any final words or comments on the budget from anybody? Anybody want to weigh in on any of this before we finish? We essentially have passed a budget tonight that I think all of us know has some unknowns that we will see unfold over the next uh, 40, 60 days. Um, the original budget, I'll remind people, was significantly higher with a mill rate above 40. I want to thank the town manager uh, and Mike O'Neill for some very diligent work looking at all the line items, looking at savings on assurances uh, in each of the departments. Um, obviously, we're wrestling with this as best we can. Um, and there's some points of view, obviously, across the board on this. But, uh, you know, we, we said early on when we saw the first preliminary budget that uh, the increases that were out there potentially, uh, both on the board and the town side, w were excessive. Um, I know we haven't got unanimous, unanimous uh, feeling on this, but uh, the cuts that have been imposed across the town and the board side reflect our efforts to get this down to a more acceptable uh, outcome. Uh, but we're still a ways away from, I think, some of the challenges we face. So thank you for your time that have worked on this. Can yeah. I just ask one question related to the if June 30th, if it should go, if the pending decision should go beyond June 30th, what do we do? Because that's the beginning of the next fiscal year, July 1st. It's the beginning of the next fiscal year. We have certain cash reserves we can call upon to pay the bills into the next fiscal year. Okay. But as we progress into fall and the teachers come back and start to get paid, we will have to levy a tax bill. Okay. Yes, please. I want to thank the council for an extremely uh, difficult budget season. It's not over. Um, we have met the statutory requirement. I want to thank you for that. I think that's important. I want to thank Mike O'Neill and his staff for doing a great job as always. Uh, Mike's a true asset to this community. I'm glad he's on board. Uh, and all the town staff that look at their line items year by year. Kathy has left, but she and her staff do a tremendous job as the, the PD and physical services, library, all the departments. Um, I can't thank them enough for, uh, I know every year when I get these requests, there is no fat in those whatsoever. And you can see that when you know, we have a tax collector right now that's borrowing office supplies <laughs> throughout the building because she exhausted her office supply mm -hmm. budget. So, but thank you very much. And uh, we'll have to see how it plays out. Thank you. I just was gonna comment quickly too. I wanna thank all the counselors as well. Um, this was a collaborative process to get where we are. I know others may want to have cut more, but at the end of the day, I think everyone did work hard on this together with, uh, with help from the board. Um, and I think if we looked at the numbers that we even possibly could have been at, if we cut another million more from the budget, which I don't think any of the folks to my left wanted to get to that, that level either, the mill rate would have been at 39.29, I think was the number. So it's, I mean, we, we worked hard to get there. The difference is, um, although I know you wanted to cut more, the number is, 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 is a high number. I know none of us like having a mill rate that high, but we all worked um, to get to a, a number that, from my perspective anyway, that, that we can live with also providing the level of services that our residents uh, expect and and I know Don I, I agree that perhaps those conversations have to be had about what the expectations are moving forward but um, but 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 I just wanted to thank everyone I do think we we in general worked uh, uh, very collaborative collaboratively on this and uh, appreciate uh, appreciate all of you so thank you Thank you, Steve. Um, we just have some minutes that need to be approved. Uh, motion to approve the minutes. I'd like the... to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of May 1st, 2017. Second. Any changes, deletions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? And I believe there's one other. 
Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of May 8th, 2017. Second. Which one was the May 8th? Any change or deletions there for the May 8th meeting? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? <coughs> Thank you, Steve. Public comment? Tom? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill. <clears throat> uh, from sitting out in the audience and watching this meeting tonight, it doesn't look like it was a group effort at all. And I'm kind of disappointed in that. I know it's a real struggle, but I would think you'd be able to work it out so that at least everybody agrees on what needs to be done. And some people commented tonight that, you know, uh, it's going to be a lot worse next year and the year after. And sometimes you have to make really tough decisions and you have to cut deep. Uh, my daughter's an educator. She lost her job in one of the neighboring towns. They had to cut teachers. And I'm really disappointed with the Board of Education. I, I regularly attend these meetings. I sat here and listened to Mr. Emmett present his budget, and he told everybody that it was an absolute bare-bones budget, and that's as low as he could go to maintain the services that they provide. I wasn't privy to all the discussions in your workshop meeting, but I understand there was three options on the table, half a million, million, million and a half. And they were asked to come back with the scenario, what, what that would involve. And tonight it, I heard that in the $500,000 scenario, there would be staff reductions, the security officer, a uh, couple others. I don't know them, I wasn't privy to that. But nevertheless, they told you all that they were going to have to cut staff to cut $500,000. Now all of a sudden, they cut $500,000, but they're not cutting any staff. And they're not cutting any programs. And I've been saying all along that their budget is just loaded with fat. It's absolute fiction. They're going to provide a good education to all of the students in this town for $500,000 less. And I believe, honestly, they could have done it for a million dollars less. You have to put the pressure on them. You don't get to pick and choose. You don't, you don't even get to see the detail. We don't even know what they're spending the money on. And yet you, you approved it. I just don't see it. The other thing I want to mention is, you know, I'm new to this process. I've been coming for a few years. And I sit there and listen and try to absorb how this is supposed to work. And we talk about um, shared services and ways to reduce our spending. But each year, the budget passes. And all the subsequent town council meetings, the majority of the conversation is spent approving money, spending. It's in the budget. Now we need the dump truck. Here's the three bids for the dump truck. Everybody raises their hand and says yes, because it's in the budget. When are we going to start working on cutting the budget? The budget needs to be 80 million, not 100 million. We have serious problems here. And I think, you know, you just have to face up to the reality of it. They're not going to come. The, the state is not going to come to the town of Weathersfield and say, here's all your money back. You don't have anything to worry about. Just keep increasing the cost of doing business, and on and on we go. Maybe we have to cut some of the services that the town residents receive. That's, that's the reality of it. You just can't keep going the way it's going. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Gus? Good 
Good evening, Gascol Antonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Basically, I agree with you, everything you say, Tom, good job. It is sad, though, and I've been coming here much longer than you. Every major voting, it's always the liberals against the conservative all the time. How can this be? How can, like, you know, one section of it thinks one way and the other one? Somebody's not doing their job. Now, you know, here we go. Three plus percent increase. You know, the past few years, I haven't got anything. I think the last year was 0.3. 0.3% to 3%. It's 10 times as much. If I'm going this way, where am I going to get the money? I already paid more than a third of it just for, for taxes, property taxes. And the comment was made tonight that, uh, that it just blew my mind. I guess, you know, the fees. If you want to rent something in town, like, you know, I don't know, any rooms or anything at all, like, you know, you got to pay. He says, well, you know, there are people that use it and people that don't use it. So if you use it, you're going to pay. Well, I have not used a tennis court maybe in 25 years. And I'm sure that some of my taxes went there. Why is that? can pick and choose, I guess. It always bothers me when I see, like, you know, Mr. Rao said that, uh, you know, the state laid off 100 people. They never talk about reducing the, the payroll. And, you know, those 100 people at the state that lost a job and probably teachers that lose the job and, uh, in towns, like, you know, those are the people that need the most because are the people that just started. They make the least and you go out the door first. Can you imagine a 5% reduction what it would do to everybody? They would not have to lay off anybody and they would save money too. Let me say another thing too. I, I've been complaining right here that basically who represents the town? It's not you politicians. The town manager represents the people that work under him. He got to get along with them. They want to increase. He's going to try to find out, you know, where he can pay more to them. And the Board of Education is the same. They're working for themselves. Who represents the town? Nobody. I don't think nobody represents the town. And we keep on paying and paying and paying. Now, you go all, all over the place. There are so many freaking houses for sale. Okay, you wonder why. Where do they go? Even our town engineer, the ex-town engineer, he's retired or he was retired. He goes south. If everybody's going to go south, who's going to pay the taxes? How are we going to do it? Keep on going up and up? Guys, I don't think you're doing your job based on what I'm seeing. Again, like, you know, instead of working together, you guys are worse than Washington, D.C. Thank you. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Very interesting evening, very disappointing. In the end results, three, po three plus percent, I think it was like close to three and a half percent increase. 297. How much? 297. 297, okay, it's 3.3 percent increase. Three nine, three nine? 297. Thank you, okay. 297. Two, nine, Got it. Very disappointing in 297. I could go through articles that I brought tonight about the state of Connecticut, the 1% the increases that we're seeing up at the... Wherever it is, it don't matter. The state is in awful trouble, and it's going to continue to be in awful trouble. We have people leaving left and right. We have people that are 
finding ways of not paying state income tax by having homes in another state like Florida, which I, I'll be looking for that myself because I'm sick and tired of paying. And, and then to come here and see this 297 increase after we see how bad this state is and how bad things are here. And nobody cares. But I got to tell you, Mayor, this is your budget. I mean, those people down there didn't vote for it. It's yours. You didn't sucker them into it. And reading some articles about, and, and I'm very disappointed again with all of you, except one, at least on this one particular article that talks about uh, 2 percent, 2 and a half percent increase, how most, some number of you have agreed that that's where we should be. The issue to me that caught my eye was one of them said it should have been flat. And I agree it should have been flat. Matter of fact, it should have been less than flat because of the economy and the way it's been going. And we keep increasing taxes. Wait till the tolls come for the state of Connecticut. I've listened to some of that. Every so many miles, there's going to be a toll thing hanging over the, over the highway. Ticking, ticking. Make sure you got that easy pass because it's going to cost you and cost you and cost you. And we'll be paying on our way out of this state and leave you with whoever wants to stay behind. Um, state of Connecticut, they just did $352 million bond again. Um, Finch rating system has uh, downgraded Connecticut on their bonds and, and on their ratings. Um, it says here that uh, Connecticut continues to crumble. Connecticut uh, would need $20,000 from each of its taxpayers to pay for all of its bills. $20,000 each. It just keeps going. Uh, we're looking at $2.3 billion next year in a deficit. The following year, $2.8 million, billion, with a B. We talk about Hartford. You, you spoke about Hartford tonight, how the governor is going to bail out or he's given $50 million. For what? It continues to give them that kind of money all along. Now it's a little extra bonus at the expense of everybody else. And, and the $100 million dollars that the state taxpayers of Wethersfield send to Harford in many different taxes. What do we get back? Pittance. And we get a night like this. Everybody's sitting around in doom and gloom. But this is your buddy, Mayor. Your buddy, up there in the state capitol, who's doing that to everybody. But this was really, what he's doing is a charade, and down here is a charade as well. We know it's going to happen in the end. And and, and the whole thing is nasty to us. But to have five people vote for the budget, it's your budget. Your taxes on your house, Mayor, are going to go up 2.97% on the average. I'm sure it'll be more because it's a much more higher expensive home. As well as your Beamer. It's going to go up on that too. So, you know, we're all going to, and, 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 and same with me. My, co my prices, my cost is going up. And I'm sick and tired of seeing it go up. I get nothing except for road service, garbage service. That's it. We have so many troubles, and we knock off a half a $500,000 from the Board of Education. I believe Tom talked about the fat. There's a lot of fat in there. Tony, you were supposed to be the financial expert, and you were supposed to be getting all that fat squeezed out. How, only a half a million dollars on what's their total budget? Tiny. That's all you found. There's a heck of a lot of fat in that budget. And what's wrong with a little larger classrooms, Mayor? We're stuck. We're, suck, we're, we're sunk with this great big Weathersfield High School payments that now, thanks to you folks, you all supported it. You all got out there on the campaign and supported it. It's your baby, not mine. You go out and buy dump trucks. 
put them on the credit card. Go buy more equipment, put it on the credit card. What did I see tonight? Police chief up here. He wants some more servers. Didn't Harris just put in a whole new system? Yes, they did. You spent billion, millions of dollars up there at that it's police station. It's not a radio station. system he's buying. It's a computer network system in the PD, which he's using asset forfeiture funds, which aren't taxpayer funds. They're asset forfeiture funds. Seized Good. by criminals. Glad you have something that brings in some money. But again, that all should have been taken care of before. Before what? When they were doing the Harris. It's two separate things. Two separate things. Okay. Then, then we look at the at renovation of the school. The school over on, um, I can't even remember the name, Web School, Windows. You know, when are we ever going to get those windows taken care of? You know, it's just like the police department should just get all of that stuff taken care of. The windows should have all been taken care of when they did renovation. But Weathersfield doesn't do it right. They do it wrong, backwards. And here we are today, like Tom's, Tom talked about, the different issues uh, on this budget. Uh, it's ex I don't know. I don't know. I'm just sick and tired of it. I'm just sick and tired of coming down here and seeing you sad saps who, who, who sap us constantly. There is no reductions. And, 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 and you, Mayor, to, to think that we are worthy of this large increase. You wanted higher. Manager wanted 6.5%. I mean, that was all a game play. Everybody knows that. Sick and tired of this. You know, I, I, just don't, I, I just don't know what to say. But thank you very much, Mayor. You're very entertaining. Um, I'm going to hate paying my taxes, like I always do. And I'll remind you of yours. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Any other comment? George? No notes, no nothing. George A. Rowe, 956 Cloverdale Circle. I haven't been here in a long time. It's not because I'm not interested. It's because I'm really busy. I've mentioned this little guy who keeps me going. I had planned to come to the council meeting tonight, but again, he changed some of my plans. And I was sitting watching a little TV, almost falling asleep. My wife said, you awake? Are you awake? And I said, yeah, I'm awake, awake watching a council meeting. And all of a sudden, I heard Cloverdale Pond, and my ears went zip like that. And I paid real close attention. My life is going to change now that this pond is going to be fixed. I mean, I won't be able to look out and call Paul or call Jeff and say, God, Don, come over here and do something. I'm looking, really looking forward to a big improvement in the neighborhood. I was really impressed, and I'd spoken to Derek a couple of times, and some of the things that he was describing as being part of their plan with things that, having lived next to that thing for, since Steve over there was a little guy, 52, we've been, oh, 62, we've been <laughs> over there, it's a long time ago. It made a lot of engineering sense, and I certainly want to be, thank the council, all of the council, because I didn't notice anybody voting against it. Uh, maybe you did, I don't know, but I didn't notice it. So anyway, I'm really looking forward to this. My wife was tickled pink. She didn't know when I jumped out of the chair and ran out and I said, I'll see you. Uh, but I really am very pleased that we finally have come to that. Am I, do I want to complain about taxes? Do I like taxes? I don't like them any more than Bob does or these guys do. But hey, I'm old enough to know that taxes are part of living and, you know, we're going to pay them. We're going to have to pay him. Am I going to go to Florida? No, I'm not going to go to Florida. I think I've told you I've got some property in town that I'm planning to retire to permanently. It's down in Old Weathersfield, you know. And that day is getting closer and closer. So, but inside, get, I've been able to go now. I can say I can die in peace because that pond is done. So anyway, enough said 
on, on, on that particular score. I have not been here for a long time for a number of other reasons. And I have, as I look at my country, I don't put Wethersfield or the Connecticut at the top of my worry list. That's not where it is. And I've let my representatives in Washington know that. So, my poverty, my area is going to be improved, but my council, and I think I said this during some very gracious 18 minutes that I was allowed at the last council meeting, I worry about different things. I also urge all of you to worry about different things. Because the things that are happening here, there's an old army expression, maybe it's not, little tiny holes in the snow in comparison to the trials that our nation is facing. I share that with you. Take it for what it's worth. I thank all of you for having passed on the pond. I'm going to go home in peace. I'm going to sleep well tonight. And peace. I think everybody here has spoken. So. Yeah. Get a motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You too. Tough deal.